and today I'm going to analyze MasterCard. This is another one of the stocks that you asked me to analyze. So before we get into the content of today, I want to uh, say a few disclaimers. First, this is not financial advice, so make sure to do your own research uh, before investing. And, you know, investing takes risks, so be mindful of that. And second, I've taken some, some of the data for this analysis first from the New York University website. So the, the part managed by us, what Darren that is widely regarded as one of the best um, experts in corporate finance and valuation. And second, I've used the data regarding the stock. I've used, I've used the data um, from Seeking Alpha and you can get a discount for the Seeking Alpha subscription. So you can access all the analysts reports, all the articles and all the data that you might need to make an analysis yourself. So make sure to check out the link in the description below. So let's get into the content of today, MasterCard. So first off, I start off with estimating the weighted average cost of capital. And I've taken the last two years beta and I've taken the interest rate swap that at the time of this recording is around 4% more or less. So I've done this this way and yeah, the, the debt to capital at the time of this recording is close to 70% and the equity is the, is the difference between the debt and the capital. So yeah, and the marginal tax rate is the one that I've taken as well from the Asbath Damodaran uh, spreadsheets so yeah another uh, thing I want you to notice is I usually use um, commas in, instead of points and points is instead of commas because I do it this way in my language so just to make you understand what I'm doing so here's the um, estimates for the weighted average cost of capital and I've estimated that over time it goes down because I think there's a Consensus, consensus around the fact that probably going forward the rates will go down a little bit. So yeah, I've accounted for that. So here's some highlights from the last 10 years of the performance of MasterCard. So here's the revenue, the earnings, and sorry, these parts are calculated with the um, capital asset pricing model. So yeah. Um, sorry the compounded annual um right uh, the compounded annual return and yeah so yeah the revenue on average uh, year over year has grown 11.48 uh, percent uh the earnings 13.38 and here's the free cash flow so yeah um here are the highlights of the past here we start making some assumptions regarding the future. So um, given the past data, I've tried to make estimates ba based on uh, what would happen, what would the fair price of the stock would be if MasterCard were to continue on this trajectory. So yeah, um, until the end of the year, I've estimated the, the free cash flow growth for at 5% and then for the next two years uh, at 12% just like the previous 10 years and then it goes down a little bit. I've, I've kept it relatively high because I think that MasterCard first of all has a great moat because it operates in a, in a field where very few companies operate. It has very few um, um, eye-catching important um, rivals such as Visa and American Express but I think it's well positioned it has a strong note and and last but not least it has it is a possible edge against inflation in case of inflation because it makes money from um, a lot of its money from fees on transactions and if the value of those transactions goes higher, uh, MasterCard will benefit 
and therefore will um, bring will give shareholders some benefits so yeah um, that's why I've taken the long-term growth I've estimated at 3.2% usually in corporate finance they tell you to keep it at maximum G, uh, the, um, the GDP traject- um, expectations that you might have for the long run uh, for the US it's around 3% but given that uh, MasterCard is well positioned is a technology company has a moat and is an edge against inflation I've taken it a little bit higher than what people usually do so yeah if you want I can change it and make it lower than this so here's the calculations and here we have the terminal value and the present value of that terminal value so um, yeah and here's uh, here we have the value of the free cash flows and the terminal value at the present time and then I've subtracted some things some expenses and uh, what are likely to turn out to become expenses such as um, employee options and benefits and so on that will probably dilute our equity so I've accounted for that and I've taken the data from the last 10k just so um, just so you know uh, where this data comes from and yeah so the net debt uh, at the time of this recording, the trillion 12 months account accounted for 15 billion dollars in debt. So here, here it is. Here we have three million options that are likely to be exercised um, that have a exercise price, a uh, weighted average exercise price of 217, so well above the current share price. So there very likely almost certain it's almost certain that they will be exercised and i've calculated the value of those options i've i've not i haven't gone through the black and shoals model um just for simplistic reasons and yeah um maybe when you see an expiration date in this case usually as many corporate finance um studies um see is that um, options usually are exercised well before um, the expiration date so that means that maybe this number th- maybe this number over here is a, a little bit undervalued but probably not as much as if we calculated the value of the options for the full duration of the option itself then we have the restricted stock units and the performance stock units that are 2.8 million and i've calculated the value just by adding the um by multiplying this number with the current share price so here's the result then um uh, so i've made the last calculations i've subtracted all these figures that could possibly dilute our equity and yeah and i've divided it by the number of outstanding shares and we have a value of 514 dollars almost 515 that is um 17 percent higher compared to the compared to the share price at the current um at the current time at the time of this recording so yeah um i think mastercard first of all is well positioned has a strong mode and could possibly be a good deal but uh, this margin is not enough to say you have a strong margin of safety on top of the valuation that we have just made so probably is not a value play for the time being but it's definitely a stock that you want to keep an eye on because it has a strong mode as i said and yeah i think that for the long run mastercard is here to stay and to do well so here's my point we can make a few changes in the assumptions we have just made let's say that for example in the long run um interest rates don't go down as we expect and we can see how this valuation changes just to give you a little perspective on how these 
little things can make a big difference so that you don't rely too much on the models themselves but uh, and if you do you have to take into consideration a strong margin of safety so we can see that um yeah the the value has gone significantly down reducing our margin very much i think that over time the rates will go down but you'll never know so you have to stay conservative when you make all these assumptions all in one place so let's make an example if the long term growth is a little bit less and we see that um the the value of the stock 491 would go down would go down compared to our pre previous estimate so you have to take that into consideration and yeah so yeah let's make a case in just in case the stock does better than the previous years i i don't know let's make it like 10 and let's bring it back to 3.2 in this case we would have a very strong um very good valuation but yeah these are just assumptions that just to let you know what it's like so this is it for today let me know which stocks you want me to analyze next if you have any suggestions uh, for mastercard itself let me know in the comments if not i really want to thank you for taking the time make sure to check out the seeking alpha link in the description so this is it for today i'm jacob this is hustle hub see you next time